Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the JSON merge patch function that was introduced in Oracle 19C. In previous releases, to modify a JSON document, you would retrieve it, modify it manually, and update it in the database. The JSON merge patch function makes many such operations much simpler. Most of the examples in this video are based on select statements, but the JSON merge patch function is also supported in update statements. We create a test table with a column to hold JSON data. We populate it with some simple JSON documents, each one containing a single JSON object made up of an ID, first name and last name element. We can see the unmodified data in the table. When we use JSON merge patch to alter a JSON document, if we specify elements that exist, the values of those elements are updated. Here we alter the last name element for each document to have the value of banana. If we specify elements that don't exist, they are added to the document. Here we add an element called new element with a value of surprise. Setting elements to a value of null removes them from the document. Here we remove the last name element. If we want to keep the element but blank the value, we have to specify an empty string, array or object. Here we set the last name element to have an empty string value. In the example so far, we've performed a single action on a single element each time. We can perform multiple actions in a single call. Here we remove the first name by setting it to null, alter the last name value and add a new element for one of the records. All previous examples were based on select statements, but the JSON merge patch function is supported for updates also. In this example we perform an update of a single row to alter the last name and add a new element. Notice we've rolled back the change so it doesn't affect later examples. Like many of the SQL JSON functions, JSON merge patch can alter the return data type by specifying a returning clause. Adding the pretty keyword pretty prints the output, making it easier to read complicated documents. The truncate keyword forces the return data to fit within the specified returning type. In this example we specified a return type of varchar210 along with the truncate keyword and we return the document truncated to 10 characters. By default an error results in a null value being returned. We can specify this behaviour explicitly using the null on error clause. Here we get an error by having a return type that's too small to hold the data and we get a null returned. Repeating the previous example, but this time specifying the error on error clause, stops the error being masked. Instead, we see the output value too large error. Thanks for watching. As always, there'll be links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.